What is up, ninjas? Welcome to part two of the PPC uh, collaboration with Jungle Scout and That Lifestyle Ninja. Today, we are going to go over Greg's shoulder and watch him optimize the PPC campaigns that we created on the Jungle Scout channel last week. So if you haven't checked out part one, make sure you head over to the Jungle Scout YouTube channel to see us create a PPC campaign from scratch. So Greg, welcome. We are very excited to watch you optimize these campaigns. Kevin, thank you very much for having me. I don't want to waste any time, so let's dive right in. So if you guys saw part one, which I encourage you to watch, Kevin set up these campaigns. They've been running for eight days now, and we've starting to get some data, which is really good. So I'm inside my Seller Central account. I'm going to um, go in under Advertising Campaign Manager, and this is where all of the PPC campaigns live. And you can see we have a number of them down here. Real quick, I'm just going to search to make sure we're only looking at the ones that we set up last week um, or eight days ago. And as you can see, we start or starting to have some good data here. In the date range column, I do have October 11th through the 19th. Um, those were are the dates worth of data that we have so far. And just as a reminder, um, it says it somewhere in here, I think it's here, but the sales can take up to, and normally do take up to 48 hours to show. So right now I have the date selected as yesterday. But this is really, they're really probably not showing sales unless they happened on the 18th, um, October 18th, okay? So real that's quick, a really important point. Let me, let me just reiterate yeah, absolutely. for everyone watching, right? Because a lot of times my students will come to me and they'll say, hey, you know, I've spent $100, $500 on PPC, but I have zero sales, right? And so it's very important what Greg just uh, said. I want to reiterate it. It does take up to 48 hours for sales data to actually propagate and show in your PPC dashboard. So, you know, if you are seeing some spend and you're not seeing sales and you've only waited like two days, give yourself a little bit more time because it's a really important point to show that it doesn't actually show up for up to 48 hours. Yeah, it's a really good point. Real quick, let me just walk you through what we're looking at here, even though I know a number of you guys already know it. Um, obviously, the campaign names that we set up, they're all running. These are manual and automatic campaigns. Um, we had a pretty aggressive daily budget because we knew we wanted to record this video um, eight days later, and we wanted to make sure there was plenty of impressions. We could get some good data so you could see how we optimize it. You don't have to set your budgets this high. But the impressions, this is how many times these um, – ads were shown on results of pages so almost a quarter million times which is a lot this is how many times people clicked on them which um, in return this is how, that means how much we get billed um, of course our spend the CTR is the click-through ratio the CPC that's the cost per click so each time someone clicks on an ad in that like in this campaign we got billed 68 cents how many orders we've had from it so 120 orders from PPC in only eight days which is pretty dang good um, and of course, how many sales and our overall A cost? The A cost is the advertising cost of sale. So just to make numbers easy here, if my product was selling for $10, an A cost of 31.7% would be $3.17. So 31% of that, um, the revenue is what the advertisement cost me. So I, Advertising yeah, cost of sales, what that stands for. A cost, um, just like kind of a simple way that I like to remember it is basically, let's say you have a product and you have a 50% profit margin, right? So if your A cost is 50%, that means that, that you're using 100% of your profit margin to make that sale on PPC, right? So you want your A cost generally to be a little bit lower or preferably a lot lower than your profit margin. Yeah, and real quick, let's just talk about how to figure out um, your break even A cost. All right, let me zoom in and make sure you guys can see this well. Um, but what I'm talking about here is at what point does the A cost, is it profitable for us? And what point are we losing money on each PPC sale from it? Okay, so the my item right now is selling for $21.95. All right, the landed cost for this product into Amazon is four dollars and forty cents and the amazon fees for this product it's pretty big it's pretty heavy i know i looked it up before this are um ten dollars and ninety cents okay so this means my profit is um my revenue minus my landed costs minus my um, amazon fees before ppc every time I sell one of these products on Amazon, I make $6.65, okay? So to figure out our break-even A cost, what we can do is we can divide our um, profit pre-PPC, pre 
divided by our revenue. And this gives us a, um, a percentile here. So just, uh, that's right, you guys, or I'll do this. Let me do times 100% to make sure that this is a little bit easier for you guys. So our um, break even a cost for this particular product is 30%, all right? Kevin, does that make sense how you figure this out? It does make sense. Could, could, you, could you just maybe explain a little bit um, a little bit deeper how you get that 4.4? What does landed cost mean for people who are watching and they don't necessarily know what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the cost to manufacture my product is about $3, okay? So I pay the factory about $3 for my particular product. That being said, that's just what it costs to get it made. I also need to get it to Amazon's distribution center. So for this last shipment, you know, I think I shipped about 2,000 units. I paid the factory like $3, but then per unit, it cost me about $1.40 to um, get my product from the factory to Amazon's distribution center. So it cost me $4.40 to get one of these units to Amazon's distribution center. A lot of people say like, well, you're forgetting about photos or um, anything else and it's like, well, for me personally, how I like to think about it, it's like I've sold 15 or 20,000 of these now. If you're factoring in the cost of what my photos for $200 cost me at the very beginning, we're talking about probably a fraction of a penny now, so I don't even worry about that. But if it makes you feel better, you know, feel free to factor in a little bit of those costs into the landed costs if you'd like. Right, and then how, so how are you, how are you getting those Amazon fees too? Have you, do you use the FBA fee calculator or what, what's your method for finding that number? You can use the Amazon FBA fee calculator. It has been known to be a little bit unreliable. Um, you can also get Amazon fees from the Jungle Scout extension, of course, or you can go into the um, uh, into inventory. You can go to manage FBA inventory and right there it shows you what the fees are for your particular product. Okay, so that cool. would so be that would be the pick pack ship with the commission. Um, and that would not include any long-term storage fees if, you know, they ended up sitting around for a while. But for this method, I think, you know, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I, and this is all how I always do it. So I think for, as far as figuring out your break, even a cost, since it's a little bit of just like a, a rough number that you're looking for anyway, I think this is gets you close enough. Definitely. All right. So we know our break, even a cost at this point is 30%. So. Let's go back real quick and look at our um, campaigns. So real quick, I'm looking at this top one. Let me zoom in a little bit. I know it's sometimes hard for some of you guys to see. Um, all right, I guess that cut it off, that's all right. So the A cost for this top one is 48.4%. Um, all right, so if they cost $100, right? Then we can do this math really easily. That means if it was $100, it would cost me $48 worth of PPC clicks to make one sale. All right, um, same thing if we go back with my profit margins for my jungle sticks, at that point it would be, um, let's just say $30 worth of profit. So I would have lost $18 on that particular sale. All right, right. the one below it, this is 21.5%, which is below my break even A costs of 30%. So I made a little bit of money um, on each of these, even after paying for the clips. What we're gonna do a little bit later on this episode, we're gonna optimize these campaigns so that we can um, get all of our ACOS levels down below or at my break even point. And we'll talk a little bit about the strategy of what you wanna do that, but we'll do that a little bit later um, because yeah, sometimes you, it is worth it to spend right at the break even or even a little bit higher because Amazon rewards um, higher sales velocity with higher organic search rankings. So it may be worth it to lose a little bit of money on PPC sales in return for higher organic rankings. But before we dig into that too much deeper, I want to download something called the search term report for you guys, show you how to use it and how it's super valuable um, for us. So to get there, the easiest way that I always do is just click on add reports. It's in the top right hand side of um, this particular screen. Um, there's on the top line right here, there's a number of different reports by default and shows up the campaign performance report, but I'm going to click over to the search term report. And then if you don't have them scheduled automatically, which you can do with this edit button, you'll have to request the report and it takes about like 10 minutes for Amazon to generate this report. So you guys don't have to wait. I went ahead and download this right before we started. 
And what we're going to do, I'm going to open up. Um, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. Oops. We're going to go ahead and delete all this. We can remember that it's 30%. And in order to manipulate this spreadsheet, or it's not even a spreadsheet, this file that I downloaded from Amazon, I'm going to use Google Docs. So if you guys aren't familiar, or Google Sheets, it's just like Microsoft Excel. It's totally free though, so I prefer to use it because everyone can access it. Um, and actually, I like it a little bit better. So just search, just Google for Google Sheets if you haven't used it before and you can pull it up. Or of course, you can um, recreate this in Excel as well. So the search term report that you download from Amazon is a TXT file, which isn't very user friendly. However, Google Docs does a good job about turning the, um, we'll call them columns in the TXT file, the text file, into a spreadsheet format, which is much easier to manipulate. So I'm gonna click on file, I'm gonna to go to import, I'm gonna click on upload on the top, select a file from my computer, and um, select the search term report that you just downloaded. It'll take a second to upload it. Um, I usually select the replace current sheet and under a separator character, just leave default by, uh, for detect automatically. And one little note, guys, is some, some people I've found that my students and myself included, actually, um, you, it's, it's sometimes you can't download the search, term report, the search term report using the Google Chrome browser. So if you are getting errors, I get errors all the time trying to download the search term report, and it's the most important report Amazon gives you by far, in my opinion, for your whole business, right? If you are getting errors in the Google Chrome browser, try Safari or Firefox. I, sometimes I have to use a different browser to download it. So make sure that you're not, you know, letting that error stop you because you definitely need to be using this report to you know, make your business more profitable. And I'm gonna walk you through all the columns in this report, but before we do that, I just wanna make it a little bit easier to manipulate. So as you can see, um, Google Sheets did a good job of splitting up this text file into correct columns. However, before we go any er uh, further, I'm just gonna click on row one. I'm gonna click on the data dropdown, and I'm gonna select filter. If you've never used the filter um, function before in Google Sheets or Excel, I would highly recommend it. It makes it much easier to work with these spreadsheets because now what we can do is we can click on this little um, funnel looking button and we can create different filters in here. So we can filter by a certain condition um, or an easier way to do it is just to go through here and check or uncheck boxes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uncheck all the boxes that are for my other products because today I just want to focus on um, the Jungle Sticks one. So, all right, I think, and I, I just want to use the ones that um, Kevin set up last week. I don't want to use any of my old campaigns just to make sure that, um, yeah, this is all very relevant information, okay? So before, you know, I had a whole bunch of, a whole bunch more rows after doing that filter, um, Google Sheets got rid of you know all those items that I unselected. So now I'm just looking at the campaigns that um, Kevin set up last week, okay? So obviously campaign names, easy to figure out. The ad group name, that's what you set. So again, it's easy. Um, something that is very important, and the reason that this is so valuable is columns C and D. Um, they're amazing. So column C, this is actually what the customer typed in to the search field um, to find your particular ad, okay? This is the only place in Amazon that you can find this information. And as you can imagine, that's very valuable for us because that means what is the actual, you know, we think we know what our product should be called, but what do customers actually search for? to end up finding um, this particular product. And then what's even more important, what a customer search for, find my ad and then purchase, okay? I'll go into that a little bit more shortly. Um, for keyword, let me, let me actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna freeze this top um, row to make sure you guys know what column we're looking at. I'm gonna skip the asterisk just for a second. So um, remember that there's different match types. We talked about this a little bit in part one of this series, but I'm just gonna go over it again. With a phrase match type, or let me start with broad. With a broad match type, we select the keyword, okay? And then it doesn't matter if people search for words 
before that keyword, in the middle of that keyword, or after that keyword, the keyword or the, yeah, that specific keyword can still be shown to the customer. With a phrase match type, you can't put keywords in the middle of the phrase. So with this one, bamboo sticks, I couldn't do bamboo marshmallow sticks. If so, that this particular match type wouldn't be shown. With a phrase, you can only add keywords before the phrase or after the phrase. And with an exact match type, it has to be the exact keywords that um, you search for. With all of these, Amazon um, kind of corrects or shows them for like plurals. So right here, I have bamboo sticks for my keyword. But if someone just searched for bamboo stick, they could still be shown this. Or um, marshmallow bamboo stick, since this one's phrase match, they would still show that. And then they're also supposed to correct for misspellings, which... It seems like they do a decent job at, but not perfect. Kevin, before we go any further, does all that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Do you want to touch on what, what um, the little asterisk means for people that maybe don't know? Absolutely. So with these, you know, when I have a keyword in here, it's pretty clear, right? I bid for bamboo sticks with a phrase match type. And this, what the customer searched for was bamboo sticks, three feet. And that, that, keyword was shown to them because there was words after a phrase match and the keyword that I searched for. Well, what's, with, what's the deal with this? This is an asterisk. There's no keyword here. What this is, is we set up an automatic campaign. Okay. With automatic campaigns, you don't bid for keywords. Instead, it's very simple to set up as we kind of showed last week. All you do, you click a few buttons and Amazon at that point, they decide what search terms they think are relevant for your listing and they show those to the customer. Okay. So there's no, we don't, since we don't bid on keywords, there's nothing for Amazon to show here, but instead what we can still get valuable um, information from this because this is like what Amazon thinks our product is. Okay. Um, they're generally pretty good, but some might not be as relevant. Like, they showed it for Boy Scouts. It's like, well, that might be relevant. Boy Scouts probably hang out by fires, like roasting it or whatever. Um, like dog towels, that would be something that's definitely not relevant for my product. So that would be one area that Amazon kind of failed. So, um, yeah. Yeah. and we can, we can. It's also important to note that you know, you you will, you can see these asterisks for manual phrase as well, um, right? Because it's, it's it's important to kind of understand the difference between columns C and D. Because for example, like in row 1916, right? Bamboo sticks versus bamboo stick garden. So like we might make a, you know, we might make a campaign and we're going to advertise for bamboo sticks because that's very obvious that it's related to our specific keyword or excuse me, our specific product. But you know, I, at least in not in a million years, would I type in bamboo stick garden or bamboo sticks artificial the next one into my PPC campaigns and so what column C gives us is it gives us these new interesting long tail phrases that we pretty much never would have been able to come up with ourselves because people are searching millions of different things every single second of every single day on Amazon and so it gives us new material and new words to create further PPC campaigns and Greg's gonna talk about how we actually differentiate which of those customer search terms those exact things that somebody out there is typing into Amazon, which of those are going to be profitable for us, right? Because those are keywords that we haven't yet identified. All right. So we, so we have all this information in here now, right? Let's, let's talk a little, real quick before we um, start a new campaign with those customer search terms. Let me just go over this. I think you guys understand it, but impressions, remember that's how many times that ad was shown. Clicks, how many times a customer clicked on it. CTR is the click-through ratio. So that's, you know, it was shown 17 times. I got one click. So that's a click-through ratio of 5.88%. This is how much money we spent. Um, the average cost per click. So each time someone clicked on it, if it was clicked on a bunch of times, that's what your average was. Um, the ACOS, remember again, advertising cost of sale. So if it's 0%, that's because people um, clicked on your ad, so you were charged for it, but you haven't actually had any sales from it. Um, for example, this one, it... it it was clicked on nine times. I spent $6 and 30 cents. And, um, I did have one sale as you can see right here in column O, um, for the $22 amount. Um, yeah, I think, um, 
I think that's kind of all you guys should need to know for this. Um, the same skew or other skew, some of these other columns over here, that would be like if you have other variations of the product or I don't think that works for other products you sell in your storefront. Is that right, Kevin? It has to be other variations. That's I'm actually correct. not sure on that. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's correct. And you know, guys, I, I just want to kind of acknowledge really quick that this, this report can kind of look overwhelming. You know, Greg and I have been doing this for a long time. Um, we're very comfortable in here. And I want you guys to make sure that you don't go to get overwhelmed with this because this report is the single most, you know, true source of data that you can get for your products and where it's not only important for PPC, it actually has some other uses. So Greg, I don't know if you want to talk about, you know, how do you use the search term report to maybe like change your, make changes in your title or to, you know, change your keywords in your back end, or do you only use it for PPC or are you using it for other things as well? No, it's really good for other things as well. So let's talk about some ways that we can use it for other things. And um, in this report, there's, a good amount of data. You know, if I would have used all of our PPC history, we would have tons and tons of data that this could even be better, but we wanted to make this as realistic as possible for you guys. So we're just using this one that's only a few days old. Um, something that I will say, um, if you, okay, so if we have a whole bunch of, or if we've had a number of sales, um, some good things that you can filter by would be, okay, so show me keywords that actually resulted in a sale, all right? So what I can do is I can remove all of the lines that have not had a sale associated with that keyword, okay? So now I see whatever, about 100 or 50 or 100 lines or whatever that are um, customer search terms that resulted in a sale, okay? Um, what I could do next, I could sort by the ACOS, let's do um, low to high. And what this is now showing me is search terms that convert um, very well and very inexpensively. So you can right. see, you know, from especially some of these that have multiple orders, it's like this one right here, this search term, wooden skewers 12 inch, even though my product's 36 inches long, um, you know, my A cost is only 5% and I've gotten two sales from that, which is very good. Um, let's look for some of these other ones that have more than one sale. Uh, I want to, I think that's an important point. So, so Greg just mentioned that his product is 36 inches, but one of his, you know, most profitable keywords with multiple clicks, multiple orders was, you know, wooden sticks, 12 inches. Right. And so people, people often tell me, you know, Kevin, how do I, or ask me, how do I find, you know, these more profitable keywords, these long tail keywords that are going to convert for a very cheap price. Right. So wooden sticks, I guarantee would be more expensive than wooden sticks, 12 inch. And just because your product isn't 12 inches, of inches people don't always know exactly what they're looking for and what they want right they might they might search wooden sticks 12 inches see greg's listing see that it's you know such high quality and that it has all of these good reviews and they might decide that they actually would prefer a 36 inch right so actually putting into your keywords all of the different sizes and shapes large small 12 inches right set of five set of six whatever like the little quantifiers might be actually can give you some of those really super low a cost sales Cool. That's a good point. So what I could do now is, um, you know, I could look for all, um, all customer search terms that the ACOS is less than my break even ACOS. So remember my break even ACOS is at about 30%. Maybe I'll go ahead and just include some of these at 32 and 33%. So that's everything, um, you know, at this line or above. And now what I could do is I could take all of these search terms. All right. So I have all these search terms. Let me just open another uh, sheet. I have all these search terms that I could then at that point put into a, um, another PPC campaign. And um, I know all these convert well. Um, so what I would likely do is do exact match or maybe exact match and phrase match and then um, bid more aggressively on those. Before right. I put them in there though, let's talk about a few of like the funny things in here. So right here, I see this. Um, it's very obvious to me right away that this is an ASIN, but I, if this is the first time you're looking at it, you're probably gonna like wonder like, what the heck is that? So this is the ASIN of someone else's product. So real quick, I'm just gonna show you what this means is what this ASIN in the search term report means is that somebody was on this listing, okay? And my product, my jungle sticks showed up 
under this section, sponsored products related to this item. So they then clicked on that and they landed up on, they landed on my product. And for this particular example, they ended up purchasing my product. Okay. So, um, unfortunately we can't, you know, we can't actually bid on those. And I think it would just give you an error. Um, uh, if you try to put them in there, so you can clean those out or you can just leave them in. Um, I, you know, sometimes I see these in people's search term reports, but I don't think anyone actually gets impressions for them. Have you, Kevin? Yeah. That, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you're just not going to get impressions for them because no one's, no one's actually searching for an ASIN. Like no one's typing in B003, whatever, right? You're, you're just, the reason that it's showing up is exactly the reason that Greg just described. Right. So, um, another cool way that you can do this real quick, um, uh, let's, I can just do sort from A to Z and then, yeah, you can look. All right. So all those are gone. All right. Um, and also maybe one point that we might, that might be worth mentioning is if you look at row four and row 10, um, and I, I'm actually curious to see your opinion here. I, sometimes I see these, these characters and I think that it's, it's, if you use a special character, like an apostrophe or something like if somebody's searching 36 by 34 using an apostrophe, then it's, then it's throwing back that, you know, that ampersand, uh, pound, uh, symbols. And so I think, you know, when I'm actually creating these, sometimes I'll go through and actually like replace that with like a 36 by, uh, 34 or like X or something like that. Yeah, you can actually, um, you can, I just like Googled this and you can find these. So th that one's actually, um, oh, ampersand, yeah, and 34. So it was a quotation mark. Right. And that's really cool. So I've, see, I'm learning from Greg right now. So <laughs> I've never actually known yeah. exactly how to figure that out, but you can kind of tell what people are searching and then just replace, uh, you know, what it's converting to HTML into, um, the actual, uh, character that they used. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you have to do this or not, but it's probably smart enough. You could do, you could do both, but yeah, that's all it is is what they were searching for is really the quotation mark. So, right. I don't think there's anything else funny in here. I think these are all good. So let's go ahead and take these and create a, um, a new campaign from them. So I'm just gonna go back into Seller Central, go into the campaign manager, create a new campaign. And again, uh, just, to, just to re kind of reiterate, the reason that we're using these words, right, is these are the exact thing that customers are actually typing in to find our ads and to find our products. So we're going to make a new campaign now based on what we've proven customers are searching into the Amazon search bar and then buying our products from. All right. So I just named it um, correctly. Um, let me just select this particular product. Um, we're going to click on provide your own keywords. All right. I'm going to paste in all those keywords. Um, I like to do both exact match and phrase match. Um, I don't know what you generally do. Uh, Kevin. Yeah. For, for these campaigns, I actually do do, uh, generate both phrase and exact match. And I actually, I actually generally turn on bid plus. Um, for these, just because they're kind of proven, we've proven that these phrases are actually converting for our keywords. So, you know, whether or not you want to try bid plus, um, is up to you, but generally I do turn, turn bid plus on for these, um, for these keywords. All right, cool. So I'm going to add those in phrase and exact, um, really best practice would be two different ad groups. One that's phrase and one that's exact. Um, yeah. but that's all right for this one. I'm going to save it and finish it. Uh, that's right. It should just remove that one keyword name. Um, right. let's just see. All right. Yep. So now this is winning and remember it's going to take a few days before we get any information from this, how it's going. Um, but yeah, that's how you would set up a new campaign based off winners you found from the search term report. So real quick, let me just go back in there because I think some people, they're going to be following along with this and going to say, um, you know, it'll be like a new product. It's not moving very quickly after a week or after two weeks, they don't necessarily have many sales yet from their particular product. Um, so let me just real quick talk about some other indicators of what you could look for to show that it is a, a high quality keyword, even though it doesn't necessarily, it hasn't yet resulted in sales. 
Um, so I'm just going to clear this. So now it's showing me um, all keywords regardless of whether or not they've had a sale or not. Um, Another good indicator, I think, would either be the click-through ratio or the number of clicks. So let's just look at the click-through ratio. All right, so I'm just sorting this by um, the best click-through ratio through the worst. And let's just say it has to have, um, let's say three clicks or more because, you know, if it's only had one click, that could kind of just be um, an outlier, right? Um, so now like what this is showing me and again, if you have a bunch of sales data, obviously that's the highest quality data and the best way you can figure out which terms you want to use. However, I do understand a lot of people, you know, haven't had many sales yet and they're like, they still want to extract good search terms from these keyword reports. So this is how I would recommend doing it. So I sorted by the click through ratio. I, um, removed the, uh, search terms that I have three or let's see, I, or one or two clicks. So it's only showing search terms I've had three clicks or more. And then I can look through at the click through ratio. Okay. So a higher click ratio is better. So let me actually sort it the other way. A higher click through ratio is better. So, you know, this particular word marshmallow roasting sticks, and that should come at no surprise. I would say is a very high quality oh. keyword for me. I would say anything with probably like 0.3% or higher is actually a pretty good word. So if we, um, sorry, the click through ratio is right here. So I would say anything, I would say like all of these are actually, um, you know, if I don't really have much sa actual sales data to go off of, I would say all of these are actually lower quality keywords for me. And um, for the most part, that seems right. Wooden skewers, yeah, I, I might throw that in there just because it seems pretty relevant. But you can see like sterno cans, roasting forks, fire pit screen, kebab maker. Um, that kind of goes to show that, uh, you know, all those aren't very good keywords for my particular product. It makes sense that people aren't buying those. So this is another way, you know, so then I could instead, I could take all these keywords um, if I hadn't had much sales data and I could do the same thing, right? I put them in a new tab. I would do a little bit of cleaning real quickly um, to figure out which ones are the good ones or which ones are kind of the bad ones. So Kevin, what am I forgetting in here? Well, one of the things that I was just going to add, right, is that you can use the search term report to kind of optimize your title, right? So what, what do we, what do we think of when we look at the click through rate? What we're really, what we're really thinking about and what we're really seeing there is that people are, are seeing our ad and the higher click through rate means that every time they see it, more people are clicking it, right? So you want to use the words that have the most clicks and the highest click through ratio in your title, right? Because the point of your title is to get people onto your product listing. It's to get them to click your product listing and get them one step closer to actually buying your product, right? So I use my search term report whichever keywords have the highest number of clicks, right? If it's profitable, whichever keywords have the highest click through rate, I want to make sure that those are represented first in my title to get people to click onto my product listing. Yeah. So what we could do there is we could, you know, so we could take all the customer search terms out of a, a CTR a click through ratio of like 2% or more. I can go to a, um, a free word frequency counter. I could paste these in here and then we could see which words out of here would be like the best ones to put in my title. So towards the beginning of my title, I would want to have marshmallow sticks, skewers, bamboo, roasting. Um, yeah, I would definitely want to make sure that I have like those five keywords uh, in my title and even more specifically than that towards the beginning of my title. And as you guys can imagine, this isn't that much data yet since it's only been like a week. However, after you've been running these for a few months, you can get some like really high quality data once you've had a ton of clicks, a ton of impressions, a whole bunch of sales to figure out exactly, you know, like what the highest converting um, keywords are. So Greg, why, why don't you show me, you know, what is an example of one of the best keywords in the campaigns that we created? What is an example of one of the worst keywords in the, in the campaigns that we created? And then what do you do with those keywords? How do you change your campaigns to, be, to make them more profitable? Yeah, great job. All right, great question. Um, so of course, you know, the the best keywords in there, or I should say, um, 
we already went over a little bit about the best keywords and I'd recommend creating a new ad campaign from those best keywords um, that we could bid a little bit more aggressively on um, or you can do exact match if you haven't done any exact match already. Um, a few of the things that we need to be thinking about here is, okay, so of course, like we've had lots of impressions, right? Um, some sales so far, but we need to optimize these. We haven't done anything as far as optimizing these campaigns yet. Kevin set them up. We've read them, let them run for eight days. And now we have some data where we can start optimizing these. All right. So I actually like to optimize straight inside of, um, the, uh, campaign manager. Okay. Some people like to do this in Google sheets, but I think it's easiest just to do it straight in here. So let me just find all of um, the, uh, the new ones that we set up. So these should be them. And just to give you an example, let me find the one that has uh, the highest spend just so it has the most data. It looks like it's this one. All right, so I'm gonna click through on this. I'm gonna look at the keywords for this particular um, ad campaign. I like to sort it by spend. If the columns here aren't the same as what, um, for you aren't showing the same as what I have, you can go in here and you can click on columns and you can uh, make it show different, uh, uh, different keywords. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to sort by spend, so the highest spends at the top, and then I go through line by line and try to optimize to get close to that 30% ACoS, all right? So Marshmallow Roasting Six is the top one. Um, as you can see, I've gotten um, quite a few sales from this. I've sold 20 units and my ACoS is right at that 30%. So I'm actually just gonna leave this one alone from now. The one below it, it's a little bit above, it's 36%. However, I'm actually gonna let this one ride out a little bit longer because it is pretty close to the 30%. And the reason that I'm gonna do that, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but getting sales through PPC helps your organic sales. When a listing on Amazon has a higher sales velocity, so it's making more sales, Amazon rewards that listing with higher organic search ranking for relevant keywords. So I'm gonna leave this one, the 36% is pretty close to that break-even A cost for me, so I'm actually gonna leave it there. But this next one, the A cost there is 75%, which is more than twice as much. So um, this, this particular one is too costly for me to um, want to continue paying that much money to make sales, all right? So what I like to do is I like to re reduce the keyword bid. Some people go in here and pause it, but you know, like it, it shows that people are willing to purchase this product after clicking on marshmallow sticks. And this, I, you know, I know that this is a very relevant keyword to my product. So instead of just pausing this, I would recommend you guys just to reduce the keyword bid, all right? Um, I need the ACoS to be like less than half of what this is. Um, it's, not, it's not quite as easy as just making your keyword bid half, but that is like a good area that you could start, okay? So, or you could just try to incrementally like reduce it, maybe, you know, like 25%, 30%, something like this. So for this particular one, let's just go ahead and try to cut this in half and see if I can still get any impressions for it, all right? Um, since the suggestion, suggested bid is quite a bit higher than what I have. It's likely that I won't get many impressions. However, um, you know, at this point I can't afford this a cost. It's not a good deal for me anymore. So I'm willing to, you know, reduce it there. So, and then again, I would have to come back in a week or two to see if I'm getting impressions for this or where my a cost is at from there. Um, this next one, 40%, um, this is just a little bit higher. So what I'd probably do for this one is I'd probably reduce this to, let's say, um, $2 even to see if I can still get some sales and some impressions, even though my ACoS is a little bit high. This one, again, this is like the 75%, right? It's about twice as high. Um, so let's reduce that to $1.25 and see if I can still get some impressions and sales. So I would go through line by line and I would um, do this. So Kevin, how does your optimization strategy differ and what recommendations, other recommendations would you have? Well, yeah, I mean, no, this is exactly how um, to do it, right? If you have huge campaigns, um, sometimes I do like to look in Google Sheets just because you can kind of manipulate the data in a quicker way. But, you know, line by line by the, in, in this method is really what you're looking for. And I think one of the points that I want to kind of reiterate that, Greg's, that Greg talked about was, um, you know, just because your ACoS is a bit higher than your um, profit margins does not mean you should necessarily pause it 
if the word is very related, right? You know your product best, you know what's related. If we saw something in here like basketball hoop or something completely different and it had a crazy high A cost, that would be a very obvious choice to pause that, right? But if we saw a, you know, a word in here, like Greg mentioned, marshmallow sticks that had, you know, a 75% or 70% A cost, something that's twice of what we're looking at, then there's really no reason to actually pause that because we've proven that it's actually converting sales. So just like Greg mentioned, I like to cut my keywords, you know, to to get the ACOS more where I'm at. But I was going to ask, um, for people who don't know, you know, what a suggested bid is, what a keyword bid is, what like an ad auction is, kind of how it works. Could you give us like a basic summary of what, you know, kind of how an ad auction works for PPC on Amazon and what a keyword bid is actually like kind of means? With the Amazon uh, ad platform, it's a, um, a CPC or PPC type platform, which means that um, you get charged when someone clicks on your ad, not when the ad's shown. So it doesn't matter how many impressions my ad has gotten. I only get charged when someone clicks on my ad. Um, Amazon is pretty smart. So some people, I think when they hear that, they're like, oh my gosh, my competitor is going to sit there and click a hundred times and I'm going to get charged a hundred times. They're, they're smarter than like that. They're smarter than that. Um, you don't have to worry about that happening. Um, so when we bid on a keyword, we're actually bidding on that keyword and match type combo. Let me actually go back to one that's not on bid plus just to start off there to start simple. And then we can go to a, a bid, uh, a bid plus. Um, so we'll look at this one. I don't think Kevin set this one up with bid plus. No, there's no bid plus on broad match. Oh yeah, this one's broad. Okay. So, um, all right. So for this particular one, we bid a dollar up to a dollar and 56 cents for skewers sticks with a broad match type. Now, as you can see right here, our cost per click was only 95 cents, right? We didn't get charged this dollar and 56 cents. So how it works is there's an ad auction on Amazon. And um, no, I mean, no one knows every exact detail of how any ad auction works on any platform. I think Google is pretty transparent about it, but this is, how, this is my understanding or my belief of how it works is um, you bid on a match type keyword combination. At that point, they factor in your product's relevancy. So you may be able to get impressions for a non-relevant keyword if you bid high enough, but you likely won't. Um, so they make sure that your product's relevant for that particular keyword because at the end of the day, they want you, they want to show relevant products to their customers right. and the keyword bid is the maximum amount that you're willing to spend. So the reason that we got charged 95% was probably because someone else was bidding like 94, uh, 94 cents or maybe even 90 cents or something. I don't know what increment they go up, but someone else probably was bidding 90 cents since we were bidding a dollar and 56, 56 cents, they charged us 94, 95 cents for someone to click on this particular um, ad that was shown with this keyword match type. Now it is my belief, this hasn't been, Amazon hasn't admitted this, but it is my belief that if you bid the exact same amount for a broad match versus an exact match, Amazon would rather show a customer the exact match term, okay? So like I said, this hasn't been proven by Amazon. They haven't admitted this, but this is my belief that um, I would like to get all my keywords to exact match because I think with the same bid um, or maybe even a little bit of a lower bid, I can get the number one spot for that particular product or for that uh, particular keyword. Does all that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that I wanted to kind of mention as well is, you know, so we were talking about that, that previous keyword where you had 70% a cost, right? We, we cut our keyword bid in half. And so, you know, some people might out there might be thinking, you know, if you cut your keyword bid in half, if Amazon's suggesting, you know, your bid at $3 and you put it down to 150, how could you possibly actually show your ad? And the, the answer to that is, you know, it's not, it, there's different times of day that are actually more expensive, right? So people are more likely to buy a product between 9 a.m. 
and you know 5 p.m. or something like that. Amazon has all this data. So instead of those prime time hours, if you lowered your bid in half, you might actually show like at night or in the middle of the night, and you might be able to get those you know impressions for much cheaper, which means that that keyword bid could in the end be profitable, right? And so one last thing that I wanted to notice or that I wanted to notate is the suggested bid is based on Amazon's data, right? So this is kind of a good starting point if you want to, you know, kind of get an idea of what you're going to actually have to pay. And so I tell my students when they're doing product research, you know, to take a look at some of these uh, suggested bids, right? Sometimes we'll actually just create dummy campaigns to see what the suggested bid is because, you know, people might see like, for example, supplements and they might think, wow, this, this, you know, niche might be amazing but then they see that the cost per click is $5 or $7, right? And so PPC is sucking out all of their profitability. So, you know, the suggested bid has a lot of information directly from Amazon um, that you want to use to your advantage. Yeah, that's a really good point. The reason that I, um, I jumped over to this particular campaign instead of the last one we we're on is the last, um, the last little note there is when you do have bid plus enabled, like we had on this one that we we're looking at, um, the, uh, what that essentially means is you're giving Amazon permission to actually spend a little bit more, I think up to 50% more than what your actual keyword bid is. Um, if that means that you can be ranked in the number one spot for that particular um, keyword. So that's all that. And that's why, um, you know, like our cost per click right here was actually $2 and 81 cents, even though our bid was $2 and 72 cents. That's why I just want to right. start with a different one. Okay. And that actually gives me, that leads me to one question. So a question that I get all the time is, you know, Kevin, I'm, I'm just not getting any impressions, right? Like I've created these PPC campaigns, but Amazon's not giving me impressions. Like, and if I can't get impressions, how could I possibly get any clicks or sales, right? So what do you do if you set up a campaign and you're just not getting like enough impressions? Um, there's a few things that you need to be thinking about. Would, one would be like, first of all, are the keywords that you put in there relevant for your particular product? Even if you were to stuff keywords um, in your back end search term or your description or whatever else that aren't relevant for your product, Amazon takes into account a few different things like what subcategory you're in and like different things to kind of know what type of product you have. So I, the first thing I would do if I was getting no impressions is I would make sure that the keywords I'm using are relevant. I would make sure the keywords that I'm using are in my title, bullet points, description, or back end um, search terms. I would make sure that I'm in a good category and subcategory. Um, something you can do some like, this is something uh, a little like trick that not a lot of people know, but um, let me just show you real quick to see, uh, to tell whether or not you are um, indexed for a particular keyword. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the, um, for my jungle sticks, I'll go ahead and just click on my sponsored ad. Um, let me grab the ASIN so you can grab that out of the URL or scroll down. It's after the DP. And what you can do is you can search for um, a keyword with your ASIN. And if your product shows up right here, this shows that I am indexed for the keyword bamboo sticks. Now, um, if I type in here baby towel, all right, instead it says I found zero results for baby towel with this particular ASIN. So again, we can, can, you, can you tell us what index means, Greg, just for people who don't know? Yeah. So all this means is essentially that Amazon recognizes that this keyword is relevant for your particular product. So when someone searches for it, they'd be willing to show your product for that particular keyword. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be on the first or second or third page. That just means that like in their system that they recognize that your product is relevant for that keyword. Okay. Right. So my next, if those other things that I talked about, all those checked out, you know, like you're like, I have the keywords in the, my um, listing. Um, I, I'm in a good category and subcategory. It's relevant, et cetera, et cetera. Then for some of these things that I'm not getting impressions for, I would check to see if I'm indexed for them. Like I actually might not be indexed for plant support. So I'm not, okay. So that's a good, right there. It's like, so that is why I haven't gotten any, um, impressions. And that also shows me, you know, I need to go back and put in like plant support and probably orchid stakes um, in my listing, because this is something that we found out that people actually are purchasing. You know, these are supposed to be sold as bamboo marshmallow stakes, but we later found out that people actually use these bamboo sticks to hold up like little plants and stuff. So 
I'm not indexed for either of those, which tells me that I need to go back and I'd probably just like put in my description. I would say like bamboo sticks also make great plant supports, use them for an orchid steak or this or that or the other thing and like list some of the other uses um, for it. So I could be indexed for those and therefore I would be eligible to get impressions. Yeah, and one, one final kind of point out at is if people, if you know, if you're watching this and you're saying, you know, Greg, I know that my keywords are relevant and I'm just, I'm getting impressions, but I'm just like, you know, I'm not actually getting any clicks. You know, one of the things that I like to do kind of to reinvigorate the number of impressions and number of times your ads being shown to people is you have to actually kind of create new campaigns. Because what how Amazon works is if you get, you know, X number of impressions, let's say you get 10,000 impressions, but you don't get any sales, then Amazon is going to deem that campaign non-relevant for the keywords, right? Even if you're sure, right? And sometimes what happens is, let's say you have 100 keywords in your campaign, Amazon will kind of randomly select which of those keywords to show first. And for whatever reason, you know, if it chooses is like the, the 10 keywords that just aren't maybe necessarily the most relevant and then it shows a bunch of impressions you get zero clicks and zero sales it will deem the entire campaign non-relevant and so go through kind of pick out any that you could possibly think are not you know as relevant right maybe you maybe you submit 90 or 80 keywords instead of 100 restart a brand new campaign right where you're going to have impressions and then you're going to have clicks and then you're going to have some sales right because Amazon will kind of blacklist so to speak entire campaigns if it deems them non-relevant from an impressions to clicks to sales ratio. That's a really good point. I'm glad you said that. And then the last thing, of course, um, we didn't mention this, but it's probably a given is um, if you're still not getting any impressions after all that, then your keyword bids are too low. Um, so you need to increase them. I would just recommend at that point to increase to uh, or maybe even the upper end of the suggested bid. Um, uh, yeah, values there. All right. right. One other thing that's important to talk about is let's go back to the search term report. And I noticed some search terms in here that I was being shown for um, specifically for the automatic campaign that weren't relevant for my product. Okay. Um, probably the first thing that I would want to do here would be to make sure that I haven't gotten any sales because I guess there is, you know, a chance that a product that, or a keyword that's not relevant would get shown. Someone would click on it, you would make sales. And at that point, like it'd be kind of okay to keep it. Um, so I'm just going to go to uh, orders place here, and I'm going to get rid of everything except um, zero. So I only want it to show me keywords that I've gotten zero sales, and then I could look through here. Um, yeah, this is good enough. I'm gonna, I could look through here and I could look for keywords that I think are very irrelevant for my product that um, I'm confident would never result in a sale and I want to totally remove, okay? So especially in this automatic campaign, um, I saw Amazon is showing my ad for some weird things like um, Boy Scouts, that might work just because Boy Scouts are often associated with campfires or uh, camping. But like dog towels, that's, um, I'm pretty confident that that is never going to result in a sale for my particular product and I am wasting some money on it. So at that point, what I would do, I would go to the um, respective campaign. So right now that's um, for my automatic campaign. Uh, I think that's this one. I would click over here to negative keywords, one of these tabs at the top. And I would insert this. Um, I would recommend uh, under most scenarios just doing negative phrase. Those phrase match and exact match, they'd be just the same as what they are when we're bidding on these keywords, okay? Um, so I put in dog towels and I'm gonna say add these keywords. And now this is telling Amazon that when someone searches dog towels or white dog towels or dog towels large, since it's phrase match, they could add on words before or after it that Amazon should not show my particular ad. And that way I can make sure that I'm not, um, that someone wouldn't click on my ad at that point, even though they're pr it's like pretty uh, high chance that they're not gonna purchase it. So that's one way you could go about doing it. The other way you could do this would be, let me, uh, uh, okay, so we can keep zero orders placed. Um, and we could just kind of see what we're spending a lot of money on, even though there's zero orders place. So like this, you know, for this, um, 
or for people clicking through to that, uh, you know, I've spent $55 and gotten zero orders from it. So wasted quite a bit of money with that. But what you can do is you can look through here and you know, you can see like, okay, which items have I spent quite a bit of money on, even though I've resulted in zero sales. Um, this is generally, uh, generally when I use negative keywords, they're for broad match types or, um, or automatic campaigns. And the reason for that is um, uh, sometimes, you know, like it, it's going to be different with every, every person's product. So it's kind of hard to like generalize this, but generally if you go in and you look at your customer search terms for different products, like some things are going to stick out. A good example of this is like, there's a glass next to me right now. If I'm selling drinking glasses or pint glasses, I might be searching um, just glass on broad match and someone might type in eyeglasses and then my pint glass is being shown for someone who's looking for eyeglasses. And it's pretty likely that they're not going to purchase my pint glass. So at that point right. I would go into the negative match. I would put phrase for, um, eye or anything or sunglasses or whatever else I can think of to make sure Amazon's not showing my product for people looking for eyeglasses. It's a fantastic point. I mean, you, yeah, you, you, you described it perfectly. Um, and one of the, just one final thing that we're seeing here. So Greg's kind of worst keyword from his automatic campaign is actually an ace, right? And so what you actually can do is you can um, put these into your negative exact matches and Amazon will basically register that as to not show your product as a related sponsored product in that kind of carousel that Greg did show. So I can type in that ace in, add this keyword. Bam. Hopefully I won't waste any more money. Um, I don't know what this exact product is, but maybe it's like the exact same product for much cheaper or something. And that's why I've just haven't gotten any uh, conversions from it. We could look at it real quick if we wanted. Um, sometimes hard to know though. Oh crap. Yeah. This is one of my other products. This is my baby towel. And um, yeah, for whatever reason, Amazon thought those were associated. So that's what, that was a really good one to add to my uh, negative keywords. Kevin, what other questions you have at this point or what did we forget? So, I mean, that, that was a pretty good um, summary, right? What to do if you're not getting impressions, what to do if your, you know, your ACoS is too high, how to kind of, you know, lower your bids to make your ACoS a little bit lower to get it to a point that you want it to be at, right? That it is okay to have keywords, you know, that have an ACoS that's very similar or even a little bit above your profit margin, just because it's giving you those organic, that organic boost for those keywords so that you're actually going to appear in or, you know, organic search results, which is in the end, which is the beauty of Amazon FBA, right? Getting those free organic sales and just, you know, leveraging the power of the Amazon customer, customer base. So really good points. And I will just make one last comment that for this particular product, the, um, the CPCs and the ACoS, um, uh, tend to be a little bit lower compared to some of my other ones. So don't be discouraged if the first week that you set this up, your A cost is like a hundred percent or even more. Um, because that is, uh, that happens to me a lot with a lot of my products that PPC for certain product types or niches will be much higher, but don't get discouraged because there still are going to be profitable words in there for you. Um, you're just going to have to dig through them. You're just going to use all these same methods that we've talked about to dig through them, to find the winners and cut the losers, which reminds me of one last thing that I didn't touch on. I talked about decreasing bids for products where my ACoS was too high, but on the other end of the spectrum, if keywords are performing very well and my ACoS is very low, um, you may actually even want to think about increasing your bids for those just to make sure that you're always going to be shown for those in the future because they are very profitable for you. Yeah, that's a good point. So if, if you have a very unique or specific product and you've proven through your PPC campaigns that every single time, basically, that someone types in this specific phrase that they're buying your product, then you want to make sure that you win every single one of those auctions, right? You want your product to be shown every single time that someone types in that exact phrase, right? So you have to kind of look through your data. If you've proven that every, that most of the time somebody like types in a very specific phrase, they buy your very specific product, then raise your bid, right? Sometimes I'll raise my keyword bid to like crazy high, just so I guarantee myself that I'm going to win that auction, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that Amazon's actually going to charge me for that. Um, right. 
And so with that, I hope you guys did enjoy that video. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely make sure you go over to Greg's channel, right? The Jungle Scout YouTube channel to check out part one where Greg and I set up the initial PPC campaigns, guys. And so I hope you enjoyed that. We will definitely have more collaborations in the future. And thank you so much for joining us, Greg. Kevin, thank you very much for having me on. And I'd recommend for everyone to make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's one of my favorite on YouTube. So make sure that you're notified about future videos by subscribing. See you later. All right, bye guys.